good afternoon to you, our viewers, and welcome to this edition of Yet the Citizen Chat Show, where we dissect matters of national importance, try to give them perspective, and ensure that the, the citizen <coughs> is part and parcel of this conversation. Today, we addressed a very pertinent topic that uh, informs the running, but also the day-to-day -day issues with the country. And we want to look at the recent decision by the World Bank to to suspend uh, consideration of uh, the loans to Uganda. It's important for us to note that uh, in the recent budget where we passed the 52.7 trillion budget, uh, we, we, we estimated to locally uh, raise close to 29 trillion uh, of the total budget, and uh, the rest would uh, come from the other alternative sources, including the debt. And we want to understand whether our country is in position to move ahead, whether with these dates or what alternatives do you have as a country to ensure that uh, we address this gap. Joining me today for this conversation, but also to give a perspective and in no particular order, is uh, Major Retired Awich Pola from NRM, serving as the Director of External Affairs. You're most welcome. Greetings, viewers, and nice to be with you. How is the NRM Secretariat? The Secretariat is good, and uh, membership at the grassroots, hmm. where we have 14 million members mm -hmm. who are registered in our registry. Mm -hmm. They are happy, children. and we are, are, those adults? We are implementing the manifesto. <laughs> <laughs> You're most welcome, uh, Major Itada, which uh, next is Honorable Atik Bernard, the former member of parliament for Aibu County, but also uh, formerly served uh, in the 9th and 10th Parliament as the Chair of the Forum for Children. Honorable, you're most welcome. Thank you, uh, my brother. Mm. It's my first time to appear here. Yes, that's a maiden and, appearance. Uh, I'm happy to be part of this discussion yes. and hope that I will have uh, an engagement that will be able to give the country the perspective of the impact of yeah. this very important decision. Thank you so much. How is Aivu County? Aivu is fine. Aivu is now a division in Arua City. Mm. And uh, of course, uh, it forms a very important part of the city yeah. because Arua Central Division was formerly part of Aivu. Yes. So because of uh, the involvement of uh, the administrative structures, mm. There are now two divisions, but of course we all know that uh, it deserves to have more than two divisions. Yes. But um, for now, I think we are giving it uh, our best to ensure that Arua is one of those vibrant cities that will provide a future for economic development in this region and uh, in the country. Thank you so much, and you're most welcome to, to this show. Thank you. Next is Dr. Sarah Birete, uh, a familiar face to us, She's <coughs> a lawyer, and uh, serves as the executive, executive director at the Center for Constitutional Governance. Sarah, you're most welcome. Thank you, and mm. uh, good afternoon, viewers. It's always glad to be back. But Let's when show. you introduce Sarah and you mention she's a lawyer, mm. I get concerned. I'm a lawyer too. You see, when you leave my profession, you imply that NRM is inadequately represented. <laughs> to make it so clear, there's no, was... that NRM has low cadre representation. <laughs> so if you mention our profession, you should mention me too. Okay, by that then, uh, Major Retired, which is a lawyer and... Uh, acting director. And legal. acting director. Legal uh, services, yeah, NRM. Is a former mm. director of legal services, <clears throat> but currently serving as the director of external affairs. Are you still acting legal? No, we have now a substantive. You have now a substantive? Mm -hmm. okay. Mr. Barat is the substantive mm -hmm. now. Ah, okay. So I was combining two directories, now mm -hmm. I'm in one. Oh, okay. Sarah, you're most welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, viewers, once again. Thank you. Uh, oh. Next is uh, Mr. Ronald Eric Wanda. Uh, Eric here is a financial consultant and uh, quite vast as far as experience with finance and the economics, uh, both nationally and globally. Eric, you're most welcome. Yeah, glad to be here. Mm. Thanks for inviting me. Mm. 
She's a medium. My maiden appearance. I'm a virgin in this space. Yes. But to roll well. You're most welcome. Uh, Not in other place. <laughs> 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 yes. Yeah, so now, and, and and I will start with you, Eric. All right. We recently received the communication <coughs> from the World Bank regarding the the suspensions and as far as consideration of Uganda's loans is concerned. What do you make of this? Huh. Receiving that information, when I first read it, it was one of those shocks. You often get, and then when it really sinks in, you start realizing the, the kind of new world you're entering, and the only hope I've had over this period of time is that somehow we, we work so hard and reverse that decision as fast as possible. Or otherwise, I get the feeling we are entering a very difficult period. It's one that I really don't understand how we will manage. I think it's important to appreciate what the World Bank does, what it is, and how we slot in, in order to appreciate why this is such a difficult decision. And, and does Uganda have a firm muscle to remain and make to its position as far as this matter is concerned? I don't think we do have a firm foundation on which to function mm. without the participation of the World Bank. Mm. So it's important that we as a country appreciate the position this can place us in and work to find ways mm. of making it such that it's either reversed or we, we structure ourselves to go forward in a way that helps us function, but without the World Bank's participation in our country, it's very difficult to see how we manage our affairs. Thank you. you. Sarah, the question of loan seems to, to, to feature in all our budgets, and it seems to be an aspect that we cannot run away from it, especially given the fact that um, our, our, our resource, local resource revenue collection fairly goes a half or slightly higher than of the, of the total budget. Mm. What's, what does this mean for our country as far as the decision the World Bank is concerned? Uh, first of all, adding on what Eric has uh, shared, I, I, wa I want to inform viewers that World Bank does not just give us loans. Mm. They also give us grants mm. as well as technical advice mm. uh, as a country. Mm. So when World Bank says we are closing shop, mm or there will be no new funding. <coughs> it's not just loans. So it would be important for, for the viewers out there to know that we are not just talking about borrowing. Yeah. We are talking about grants, we are talking about technical support <coughs> for the country. And also it's important to note that World Bank is the most concessional lender, lending mm. institution mm. you can find with the, its loans being between one and 2% interest. Mm but also long-term mm. payment schedule, and also you, know, you can negotiate mm. the, the, pay, the repayment schedule, mm. but they also forgive loans. Yes. So this is a, a package that you cannot find. Mm. If you compare with the other, the new emerging lenders like China and, and other sources, China's lending starts from 4%. That's the best you can find. Mm. 4% upwards. China's terms of lending are non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. negotiable. Mm -hmm. They also take sovereign property mm -hmm. as guarantee, unlike the World Bank. China almost confiscated <clears throat> properties in Zambia until the World Bank came to their rescue and IMF. Mm -hmm. The same in Ghana. IMF and World Bank have come to rescue of Ghana mm. against China mm. loans. Mm. So the World Bank will never take sovereign property. We, we have our airport collections mm. going to an escrow account mm. because of a China loan. Yes. World Bank can never do such things mm. in any country. When you look at the other alternative, which is local banks, mm. interest in local banks starts at 6% mm. upwards. Mm. Recently, we got a Stanbic Bank consortium loan at 7%. Mm. 
mm. and, and also they failed to find the money. Mm. Even after uh, 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 parliament approval, mm. the banks could not find all the money that the government wanted. Mm. So this is what is at stake. Mm. <clears throat> what are the available options? I think it's clear for the viewers to understand mm -hmm. what it means. Mm. When the World <clears throat> Bank writes to a country and says, we are suspending funds because of our values, World Bank is a consortium of five uh, biggest lending, lending institutions and 189 member states mm. that they support. So the board that comprises of 25 members and these are representatives of countries. Mm -hmm. When they take a decision, I, I've seen many people, you know, lambasting the US. Mm -hmm. It is not purely a decision of the US. US, yes, could be having a majority share mm -hmm. in terms of the bank and, the, and, and hosting the institution, mm -hmm. as well as uh, taking, you know, uh, controlling the presidency, mm -hmm. whereas Europe controls mm -hmm. the IMF presidency. Mm -hmm. But the decision of board mm -hmm. by the bank is mm -hmm. not just a United States of America decision. Mm -hmm. So having said that, <coughs> then what are our available options? Mm. Or why is it that Africa has failed to develop mm. or is highly dependent on loans? Mm. I, I think it's the, the issue that we should interrogate in this, in this debate. Africa has top five challenges. <coughs> the first biggest challenge is governance mm. or leadership. But what could be the, the, the source and maybe your your source as far as these problems are concerned? Is it maybe your assessment or these are assessments as per a specific source? No, 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 mm. the, the, the main source. Mm. Our the, views. The, the, uh, it's, not, it's not my views. Mm. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, first of all, you need to understand or yes. appreciate <laughs> that I'm a governance actor. Yes. Whether you call me an expert or not, mm. now that when I leave, Yes. For your discretion. Yes, yes, yes. But I'm an actor in this space mm -hmm. <laughs> that you can't discount mm -hmm. whether you agree with me or not. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the top <coughs> challenges of Africa, mm -hmm. and, and for purposes of viewers out there, I'm, I'm, I'm quoting the National Institutes of Health okay. Government on Political Economy of Debt. There's a write-up on Political Economy of Debt in Africa. Just as one of the sources, it's yeah. not the sole source. The yeah. other information is from the World Bank website. Yeah, yeah. I'm not an economist, maybe to add right. another mm -hmm. claim. I'm mm -hmm. just a mm -hmm. governance person. Mm -hmm. So the, the top five challenges for Africa, one is governance, mm -hmm. leadership. If you look at why Africa, the most endowed continent mm -hmm. in terms of energetic population, mm -hmm. we have the highest number of the world's working mm -hmm age group, 60% mm. mm. is in Africa. Yeah. Some of it now is highly qualified. Mm. I, I don't know the percentage, mm. but this panel alone demonstrates yeah. that Africa is not lacking in terms mm. of educated people. Yeah. We have the biggest share mm. of natural resources, renewable and non-renewable mm -hmm. as a continent. Mm. We have the largest mm. share of fresh soils mm. as a continent. Mm. We have the largest share mm. of good climate, mm. more than any other continent. Mm. So what is our problem? Mm. Why are we beggars? And why do we live in poverty? Mm. I think it is common sense yeah. that it's a leadership issue. Mm -hmm. Our second biggest challenge is a colonial legacy. Mm where we have, we are dependent on, on the colonial economic structures, colonial and imperialistic yeah. economic structures. Mm -hmm. And that includes the World Bank, IMF, and other institutions. Mm -hmm. And we have failed mm -hmm. to develop ours, even when it comes to the ownership of World Bank, mm -hmm. of African Development Bank. Mm -hmm. The biggest African countries is Nigeria and the... the Nigeria, there is a... Egypt and the South Algeria, Africa. yeah, and Nigeria. Algeria. Yeah. But the rest of the shares is US, Canada. Mm. Uh, there's Japan. There's Japan. Mm. They actually they have the controlling shares, though three yes. in in ADB. Mm. So even when you say that we can be independent, mm. the controlling shares are, are non-African mm. in the African Development Bank. Mm. So we have failed 
<clears throat> to even Africanize mm. the economic structures. Mm. So, and that is leadership. Mm. The, 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 so we are dependent on these colonial imperialistic mm. economic structures. Yeah. The third biggest challenge is now the how we we are we interface with foreign aid, mm. foreign investment, mm. and the global shocks. Yeah. How prepare? How have we built? resilience, resilience yeah. for yeah. our economies mm. to be a player mm. in this context mm. we have failed on that and, and and the fourth challenge is climate change adaptation yeah. that is now causing us mm. making us food insecure or mm. we lack food security mm. and and the the last challenge is population yeah. population is both an advantage and a disadvantage because mm. we are not planning yeah for the high mm. population rates as a country. Yeah. So the question today that we should deal with mm. is how mm. can we think better mm. as Africa mm. to play in this space? Yeah. Thank you so much, Sarah. Quite an intriguing submission. Honorable Atiku, how can <laughs> we think better? Um, uh, thank you, Ndugu Chemonges. Mm. And uh, I want to thank uh, Dr. Sarah. Uh, it's my first time to physically mm -hmm. interface mm -hmm. with her. When we on WhatsApp, girl. But uh, <laughs> we, we do exchange <laughs> ideas these days yeah. on social media, <laughs> thanks uh, to uh, internet and yes. the ICT mm. innovations. Yeah. Um, this is uh, quite uh, a topic, yeah. which I believe, of course, ever since the suspension was announced, mm. has been discussed on various fora. Mm and they will continue to be discussed mm -hmm. because uh, we are yet to see the impact or the effect mm -hmm. of this suspension in Uganda. Mm -hmm. And uh, as uh, the World Bank also communicated, they are, they are trying to use us, us as a litmus test mm -hmm. or litmus paper mm -hmm. for those other countries with intentions of mm -hmm. the kind of move that led to the suspension. Mm -hmm. But it's important for us to appreciate mm -hmm. the background of the two institutions, the World Bank mm -hmm. and Uganda as a country, mm -hmm. because we have had a relationship. Mm -hmm. And this relationship started way back, mm -hmm. either before or from immediately after independence. Before Uganda became independent, the World Bank existed. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, we have seen, okay, after Uganda getting independent, mm -hmm. we have seen World Bank mm -hmm. part of the development in this country or part of the financing institution in this mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. So World Bank has been here as old as Uganda's independence. Mm -hmm. So when we are looking at this current uh, 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 fractured relationship, mm -hmm. We need, to, we need to have that in perspective. Mm. For how long has the relationship existed? Mm. How have we benefited from each other? Mm. And uh, I think from that perspective, we'll be able to digest yeah. this uh, matter, uh, uh, you know, objectively. Mm. But nonetheless, um, as a, a former member of parliament and also uh, somebody who sat in the committee of uh, uh, committee of, uh, uh, should I call it, loans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we used to call it the committee, national economy. committee of national economy. Yes. But ideally, that's the committee mm -hmm. that processes all lo loan requests yeah. that government has uh, secured yeah. and eventually presents to parliament and then parliament passes before mm -hmm. Minister of Finance mm -hmm. begins utilizing those uh, mm -hmm. facilities. Mm -hmm. um, World Bank, of course, as Dr. Sarah said, has been the, I think, number one funding partner mm -hmm. for major infrastructure mm -hmm. projects mm -hmm. in this country, be it roads, mm -hmm. be it uh, in the social services sector, education, health, mm -hmm. be it, uh, you know, <clears throat> capacity building. Mm -hmm. Many of our officers in the Ministry of Finance, mm -hmm. whichever ministry, mm -hmm have in one way or the other mm -hmm. benefited from capacity building. Mm -hmm. People who have been, you know, sponsored to do courses mm -hmm. 
yeah. that is relevant in the sector or in the, in the economy have benefited. Mm. And therefore, we, we need to have that in perspective. Uh, while in the Committee of National Economy, as I said, we have looked at many, actually the, the role of the committee basically has been to, to look at the terms. Yes. Are those terms favorable? Mm -hmm. When we acquire these loans, shall we be able to pay mm -hmm. on time? Yes. And that brings me to the ratio yeah. of our local revenue collection yeah. Yeah. and what the likes of World Bank have been putting in into our budget to support the various developments. Mm -hmm. Now, the current budget, the 52 trillion shillings, mm -hmm. out of which, let me say, more than half of, of, of the resources yeah. was actually to come from, or is going to come from, mm -hmm. the development partners. Yeah. Now, that is where the significance of World Bank comes in. Mm -hmm. At one point, we had hit the threshold mm -hmm. beyond which World Bank also was saying, we cannot give you more mm -hmm. or release more money to you because mm -hmm. according to our assessment, mm -hmm. you will not be able to repay. Mm -hmm. We all know that uh, Uganda was one of those who, countries which benefited mm -hmm. from... Uh, debt for business. Debt, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, are, we were expected... Twice? to use that debt, debt forgiveness mm. yeah, that one to recover the economy. Mm. But instead, the situation went from bad to worse. Yeah. After we were given that space, we went overboard and borrowed more money. And uh, we decided to divert, to begin going to China, to begin going to India, mm. to begin doing domestic borrowing. You but know. also to increase corruption. <laughs> <laughs> so we, 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 we have had these perspectives and, uh, and uh, it is important that uh, we now look at the impact of this decision that World Bank has taken. I don't want to, 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 to concentrate on the cause. Mm. Actually, the passing of the Anti-Homosexuality Act mm. is just one of those scapegoat reasons. Mm. Otherwise, as a country, we have crossed the red line mm. of World Bank several times. Yes. Even go, the, the, the decision to go to some of these loan sharks mm. is against the advice of World Bank. Mm. So ideally, whether we passed the Anti-Homosexuality Act or not, mm. at the time uh, T, World Bank was going to take a drastic decision mm. to suspend Actually, for me, I, I would want to say that they had, they had taken, already taken a decision to suspend because we already hit our threshold for borrow, borrowing, mm -hmm. which the World Bank had put. The reason why we are doing the domestic borrowing, this and that, before I left Parliament, mm -hmm. for three financial years, government was borrowing to pay salaries. Mm -hmm. What's the, what they used to call budget support. Yeah. That budget support was ideally to pay salaries. Mm -hmm. You will reach nine months into completing the financial year, mm. and you'll see Minister of Finance struggling mm. to find the resources mm. to be able to complete the financial year. Mm. And if you have been observant, mm. this recent past, in this recent past, mm. why there have been issues of people missing salaries, mm. it's, it's not uh, by accident, mm. it's a deliberate move. Mm. The insiders know. Why they have been rationing payment of salaries, which is a constitutional, you know, mm. right yes. to, mm. to, 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 to whoever is a government or a public servant. Mm. So when the coffers are dry, you begin to hear public service doing uh, auditing, mm. running around the country to, to appraise. Mm. I mean, what don't they have? Mm. What information does a public means of public service have yeah. about? It's working staff. Mm. They have that information. Mm. There's no need for Auditor General's office to begin running around to say, we want to update our, our, our list of mm. civil servants. So those are all excuses government is putting forward 
to be able to cushion themselves. But the fact is that the budget that we passed, half of it, actually not half of it, but first of all, when you have to dissect that budget, mm. half of it is, is supposed to go for debt repayment. Yes. Every year, mm. we are supposed to service debt. Yes. And, we continue and our mm. debt servicing mm. portfolio mm. is beyond the 30 trillion. Mm. So subtract 30 trillion out mm. of the 52 trillion budget. Yeah. That means we're left with the <laughs> about how much? Yeah. About 20 billion, I mean 20 trillion. Actually, on that, the, the budget close to 27 trillion mm -hmm. goes towards uh, the trip, the payment. Exactly. So we are left with close to 25 trillion. So, that, so that of the 25, mm -hmm. you have, that would ideally be the discretionary budget. Correct. But in there, you have the, the salaries, you have the gratuity, you have pension, and the salaries, so, which goes to up to 7. Three trillion. Correct. So left with very minimal resources. So ideally, we are we are really crippled mm. and we are doing badly. Mm. But uh, we have good people who mm. can spin for the government, mm. left, right, and center. Mm. But I can assure you, mm. this suspension is, is is going to expose us bare. Mm. Time is going to reach when everybody will have to speak the truth. Mm. And I'm sure we, we have reached that moment. Mm. We are just uh, monitoring how it's going to unfold. Mm. Out of that, the IGG says 10 trillion. It's stolen. stolen. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, so the, the and, um, much, of, and, and, and <laughs> much of this stolen money is actually, <laughs> much of this stolen money is the borrowed money, yes. unfortunately. Mm. The money that the government borrows. Mm. You know how debt resurfacing happens? It's not that whichever money is borrowed, the collection or the payment is supposed to come from that specific project mm. in which that money is invested. Mm. We expect that the, the, the projects are supposed to help the economy mm. to grow, yes. in that the revenue sources mm. will increase. Mm. The collections is what now goes into the treasury, mm. that eventually goes into debt payment. Mm. But we have people, thieves, let me call them thieves. Mm. Shameless thieves mm. who are placed in the Ministry of Finance. Mm. They start stealing this money from negotiation. Mm. You know, the president reached a, a point when he had to, 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 to put his feet on the ground, say, whichever loan that is going to be sourced mm. must pass through his office. Yes. He must give it a note before it is processed. Mm. You remember the officials from Ministry of Finance who were arrested with two hundred million dollars. Mm. I mean, two hundred thousand yeah. dollars, and <laughs> mm. these are key people who are actually hired by government to go and negotiate on behalf of the country. Just imagine now; these are the people who are stealing. Yes. Now, if you begin stealing this loan mm. from the negotiation table, mm. by the time it goes to the project site. Mm. You expect paltry resources reaching. That's why mm. there are shoddy works. Mm. Because part of the money which is supposed to facilitate the project implementation mm. is shared. Mm. The contractor has to give a share mm. to people who award the contracts. Mm. Now, that is when the, 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 the integrity of the project is compromised. And that's mm. why we get shoddy work. Now, when you get shoddy work, that mm. means the project will not be able mm. to give a multiplier effect mm. to the, for the economy to grow, mm. where revenue is supposed to be collected mm. and then eventually pay, repay the what? The loan. Mm. So mm. we have a, a cobweb of problems. Mm -hmm. But the World Bank's decision, for me, mm. comes in timely mm. for us to examine mm. ourselves as a country, mm. whether we have been doing things <laughs> right or not. Mm. And if we have not been doing things right, then we must come up with the measures to fix those gaps. And I think this is a moment of truth where we must cut our coat according to the cloth at hand. Oh, size. Yeah. Thank you so much, Honorable Barnett. That's very insightful of you. Uh, Major Retired which listening to the submissions here, does it concern you? Do you think as a country we are headed in the right direction? And what do you think needs to be done? It does concern me, mm. and it does concern the party, yes. and by extension the government mm. that our party formed mm. 
after winning the election. And I'm sure you heard what the president commented. So it's not anything that we sweep under the carpet. Mm -hmm. But as I always say, this kind of discussion also serves to, to share information and educate our viewers. And therefore, I may want to add on the history of World Bank and IMF, that these are institutions which came at a given time in history. Uh, after the Second World War, the Americans, United States, tried to develop and reconstruct the war ravage areas on their own under the plan called Marshall Plan. Marshall was actually one of the generals in America who <coughs> became president thereafter. Mm -hmm. So they did in Japan, they did in Germany. But later on, I think the feeling was that, how about these other countries? How will they develop? And that is when these so-called <coughs> Britain <coughs> institutions came. I think Britain would be say, a city in France mm. where the sitting or the meeting took place. Uh, which city is that? Washington. Washington. Mm. Britain would. So these institutions, <coughs> the German was named it. It is tagged always to that kind of formation. So the institution came almost born as twins, IMF, World Bank. And in, in the case of uh, World Bank, of course, I like others, is that it has membership. And that is where the problem starts. That when we're in a group of association and you talk of norms or morality, morality is ideally an acceptable situation by all. So you find that the morality in some of these constitutions or the norms and which they now call it human rights is what is not agreeable to all. Uh, and the same injustice applies in the Security Council. There's been a lot of advocates that this institution is not democratic. Some countries have much more say than others. Sarah says that it is not a decision <coughs> by the Americans, but it is to a big extent. So you cannot have a membership association of 189 or so countries mm. which contribute to this bank. And you came up with a unilateral decision mm. that this is what the moral dictates. Mm. That our moral is accept same sex. Mm. So the other countries are saying, hey, we're also members, but we didn't agree to that. Mm. But even in the case of Uganda, take it as same sex as such. The president said we have few contentious issues in this bill. Mm. One. We don't want anybody to be forced into that. Mm. Two, we don't want children mm. to be recruited into it. Mm. If he's an adult and he makes up his mind, that is it. Mm. Okay? Then three, there is an element of advertising. <clears throat> Even the most contentious issue was for me and you to report who we suspect mm. to be homosexual. Even the law says, no, mm. it's not your business to report who. So there are only three issues in this. Mm. And I think that is why the president said we can talk. Because they seem to have heard of this bill in rumors. Mm. Only the title. Only the title. Mm. This is basically a family protection mm. bill. In fact, me, I was even saying the, the shouting title of what is the right citation? Anti-homosexual. Anti that uh -huh. shouting title... Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The, that shouting title <laughs> itself was erroneous. If I was in parliament, would have moved an amendment mm. to the title. To the, title. Mm. the title should have been Family Protection Bill. Much as myself originally had even said, if that is what they meant, mm. even uh, the British left <clears throat> uh, criminal law provisions could do. Mm. But these are only three contentions. And I think that is what we need to do. Much as the injustice in the bank is so unjust and just, just mm. like it happens in Security Council, mm. we do believe that the, the unilateral decision to put that as a norm mm. is erroneous. Because mm. many countries, I'm sure, mm. don't believe in that. Mm. But be as it is, even the bill or the, the, the law, actually the act, because it's already assented to, mm. this, the bank seems to hear it in rumors. Mm. Is that I am, is yes. That Recently, mm. I have been in Germany. Mm. I've been in Denmark. Mm. I've been in UK. Mm. I met the members of Parliament of Denmark. Mm. In the Parliament of Denmark, mm. I met the House of Lords mm. and the House of Commons. Mm. And when we inter in talked to them at sh close range, they said, no, that's not what we were told. Mm. And to this effect, I have a similar move in USA and Canada mm. shortly in the months to come. Mm. 
and with the same team, we shall talk to them. Mm. I believe the president will also talk to them. Mm. So let them tell us if these three ingredients are so offensive, if these three ingredients in the law is so offensive to them, and it really amounts to the title. To us, the ingredient in the law is contrary. It is not synonymous with the title of the law. So are we, are we, okay. do, do you think that it's a deliberate move by the stakeholders to misunderstand us, or it is a move by, by the proponents in the country to try to mess up what <coughs> as a, came as an effect to this law? Normally, mm. uh, many of these information are picked through the public means, mm. not through the official means. For example, I don't think any embassy of World Bank mm. even asked for a copy of the law and subjected it to their experts. Now, I, to, I think I found out which you are misrepresenting. I'm looking at mm. the signed law. Mm. The law online on the website of Parliament, but also on the link for laws of Uganda, mm. signed on 26th of mm. May 2023. Yeah. The World Bank raised issues on discrimination. Mm and name, the need for inclusion. In the, Where is in it in the law? I'm coming. You I, never I, I, come. No, when? <laughs> you always say I'm coming and you so, never come. So, if you read the clauses, sections 14, 13, 14, and 16, 15. Section 13 is on disclosure of sexual offenses record. Mm. This one includes employers, mm. and I'm concerned as an employer yes. because I don't know the sexual conduct yes. of my staff, and yes. it's none of my business. Mm. But I, 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 there's an obligation on that. Yes. Section 14 is the duty to report acts of homosexuality. Mm. This mm. includes media, mm. includes employers, yes. including the World Bank. Mm. Who knows? How people sleep in the night? Are we going to camp under their beds? Mm -hmm. I'm also concerned about this as an employer. Mm -hmm. Because how am I supposed to know? Mm -hmm. And if it is established mm -hmm. that one of my staff mm -hmm. is, is a homosexual, mm -hmm. I have committed a crime. Mm -hmm. These are the concerns. These concerns. I, I think these sections really yeah. should bother any Ugandan. Yeah. Because anybody can fall victim. Mm. I have lost the flow mm. of my my views. When mm. Sarah was taking, I was uh, talking. I was taking notes. Mm. And please, so as, as, as a moderator, mm. you should control this no, interruption. Okay. We, we could proceed. For mm. us in the discipline mm. NRM, we don't do that. <laughs> when Sarah That's was okay. taking, I had my pen and my notebook. <laughs> okay, so if all of us were to jump and interrupt it, you should... now information. first of all, <laughs> that to me is the, the provision in the draft. Mm. The disclosure, mm. we even the discussed in the movement caucus in Kololo, mm. and we agreed in the movement caucus that you have no business reporting anybody. Mm. And they, they went back for the amendment. So I don't know what which text is reading. But it is in yeah. the law. <laughs> yes. No, I will, I will come the with the, another it's it's with the text. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so mm. uh, I am saying yeah. that still, Mm. the gist of the law, and we shall go with the text mm. to... I even went with the text to Denmark, to mm. German, to, 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 to London. Mm. So we shall what go with the, the text. Mm. Uh, the mission is that we felt that our partners have had a lot of distortions mm. and misinformations mm. about us. So mm. we felt we could engage them mm. to give them the version mm. that we thought was a correct one. Mm. Now, uh, <coughs> I, I was I had started talking about the history. The bank gives loan for big infrastructural mm. uh, the development mm. roads like the city Kampala thing. It is unfortunate. Maybe some one of us will come up with a list. Yeah. But if you look at the list, I look at the list. Mm. It talks of three percent of this, three percent on that. 2% on the other. Mm. So I was asking, mm. maybe if there's any other expert, if this percentage is the total money mm. from the, the, from the project, mm. then it's not that fateful. Mm. It's not that fateful. Mm. So they put in money on addition to those projects. Mm. It's money though, but if we came into head-on collusion, mm. then we would have to, to do something. Mm. Now, this now, the projects that they're involved in makes me now talk to the other alternative that we ran to. Mm. 
China, for example. Mm. Recently, because I'm director external, so mm. I have the mandate to meet foreigners. Mm. Recently, we had a visit from the Minister of Foreign Affairs of China, mm. State Minister of Foreign Affairs, who is a member of the highest body mm. of the party, in our party, mm. the, the, the SEC level, mm. Central Executive Committee. Mm. It is a very important thing in China. Mm. So this guy came, we welcomed him at the airport, I was with Mike Mukola, the vice chairman. Now, I started looking at what China does compared to World Bank. Mm. The airport we were seated in was being renovated by China. Mm. I'd borrowed cars from foreign affairs for the dignitary too. Mm. They were Chinese cars. Mm. <laughs> the road we drove, express road, to, uh, to this hotel of uh, Bitature. Mm. The road was Chinese road. Mm. The following morning, mm. We, we were supposed to meet the Japanese, president. Eh? The president mm. was in South Africa. Mm. The president was in South Africa. He had delegated the vice president to meet. Mm. We met in Twin Towers. Mm. It was a Chinese house. Mm. Now, when I looked at World Bank and IMF, mm. do you know that it almost needs an economist mm. to fish out what they do? Mm. You don't see with naked eyes. Mm. You need an economist mm. to say, oh, I, I think they are doing this. I, I think they are doing that. Mm. You cannot get a peasant to say mm. from the house we are seated in was mm. a World Bank, the road we drove in mm. was a World Bank, the house we sat in was a World Bank. The, mm. You need an economist to see this. Mm. Most of the monies mm. are involved in invisible things. Yeah. Workshops, seminars, all that, all this. And that is why they're vulnerable to uh, theft. Which, uh, which, uh, which we've seen, uh, uh, maybe you have an information. No, let me finish and then I do that. But now that brings mm. me mm. to the fact that we are now coming on head order and collusion mm. by this decision. Unless the decision that we thought to engage them will work. But we, have been, we are now head on collusion. Mm. It now brings us to back to what many of us as cadres have mm. been advocating, the discipline. Mm. It is true, if we go by the official position of IGG, the trillion is stolen. Mm. We Thank as cadres mm. have always advocated that, mm. comrades, mm. are we doing it the right way? Mm. We have always advocated for the discipline. We have always advocated for the, the merger, that is why the merging of government institutions was going on. We have long ago, we may not advocate in public, mm. but in house, mm. we have advocated it. Mm. You, there are so many institutions that we discuss in house. For example, if you met a group of political commissars of the army mm. meeting and talking objectively, you may even think it's a group of rebels. But we have that objective in house. Criticism. Mm. And some of this is what we have been saying. Mm. So we do believe mm. that coming head on mm. with the discipline and what we have been advocating in house, we can move in. Thank you. Thank but you. Mm. it's a challenge, but mm. we can move in. Mm. We can move on. Mm. Mm. I, I think what we all agree is that where we are is, is, is a good ground for us to have this conversation yeah. and see where we pick it up from, from here. Uh, Ronald, Listening to the to the panels, and I know you have uh, probably information to measure it out, which, where do you see us? Are we able to handle this situation we have currently? Uh, Maybe we could start by giving uh, which... The, the yes. First of all, I think we are mixing up a few things, and we may land into misconceptions and dismiss the idea of what we are really facing at the moment. Because... I don't, we, there are quite a number of issues. One of them is on the homosexuality and homosexuality bill. Yeah. It's a uh, law, law itself. Mm. What we have to appreciate about that particular law is that it comes at a time when the world is moving towards what we call ESGs. Mm. ESGs are basically environmental governance, as the Dr. Sarah Rireta has been saying all along, and social issues. <coughs> that the Western world, or the, let's say the world, is moving Yo, towards... You say Western, it is them. <laughs> you say yes. it, why are you withdrawing? It is them. Mm. Yes, that's and they true. impose it on mm. others. Mm. Yeah, but the idea is that any major funding that will arise from the West has to go through 
institutions that meet these particular three areas, ESGs. And ESGs are quite wide, and that's where we find ourselves landing into the hot soup of the anti-homosexuality law. In that, in the, at the social level, and she clearly pointed it out, the parts of discrimination of any nature, it does not just apply to the homosexuals for that matter, but discrimination of any nature, if we did it against women, or we did it against say, albinos, or we did it against particular groups of people, if there was a particular law being designed targeting any particular group of individuals in a country for that matter, it would be problematic. <clears throat> and that's where the World Bank comes in. Because whatever we think of the World Bank as a membership group, it also gets its funding from the general financial institutions around the world. And the only way you're going to get that funding is if you somehow meet those ESGs. We are somehow crossing quite a number of issues and we, are, we will land ourselves in trouble. We've landed ourselves in trouble because of that particular area. The idea that you focus on one particular group and design laws against them for whatever reasons is where the problem comes in. I think there we have to be quite careful. And in our society, we've had laws that criminalize real criminal aspects of either homosexuality or otherwise, the criminal aspects of them. The fact that we then design a law on top of what we have as criminal aspects that we could target is where the problem arises. Also, you mentioned three areas that are problematic to us as a country because of our values, either as Africans or otherwise, that is <coughs> actually pertinent. And I think that's where the problem is. And we are misunderstanding each other over that. The fact that there is a, an idea that there is promotion, <coughs> the possibility that there could be targeting of children. And the third one that you mentioned, Yes, those are problematic, and I think we have particular laws against them. Especially, there is no way a child would be targeted one way or the other, and the, there is an act of homosexuality in any way that it, the person wouldn't be dealt with in our current laws, all laws that existed before this particular one. So the idea that we design a whole law focusing on a particular set of people for their activities that may be among adults, that may be private, I think that has been really problematic in its own way. We, the fact that we think it goes against our African values, which is probably true, does not necessarily help us. What I think, us as a country, what again we are really failing to appreciate is that we are entering into American culture wars and siding with one side and we, we end up in problems for that. Because in the US, the, uh, the religious right is basically fighting against what we call world liberalism. Mm -hmm. And in their fights, this is very central to them. The, the fact that they also push for this particular law, but not the killing part, of course. But they push for laws of this nature, especially as they confront themselves with the homosexuality. Now, whatever their fights are, and the fact that there's promotion in the West and there's in many spaces, does not fully come into our, our country, for that matter, and really make us suffer in any particular way. But we are finding ourselves engaged in a fight that is very Western, that is in, in their Mideast, and we are somehow going as far as designing laws for a set of our own population. Now, that's problematic. I think that's where we should appreciate this coming from. Of course, either religious or African values or otherwise, designing a law against your own population becomes the central issue and discriminating against them in any way, criminalizing or otherwise. I think on the homosexuality front, I think that's where we are miscommunicating, either with them or, or ourselves misunderstanding issues, but we design a law and put in aspects that seem to target a group of people. If we design a law that targeted, say, dark-skinned people in any way, it would be problematic because many people would assume this is a natural phenomenon. If we designed one that targeted light-skinned people, the same issue would be pro a problem, or tall or short or otherwise. So if there is a, an understanding or a belief among a particular part of the population that there is some level of naturality around homosexual, <coughs> homosexuality, and, there is, and, and it's among adults, and it's private, 
and it's not affecting the rest of the population, but you go ahead and design laws against them, you have to find a proper explanation that goes further than trying to indicate that you are actually not discriminating against them. You really, really have to explain clearly why these particular people engaging in their private affairs is a problem to the population of Uganda. But, but Ronald, uh, you know, it's not the first, Uganda is not the first country to have such a nature of the law, but also to receive the reaction it has received from the World Bank. Yes. What makes Uganda a unique place to be in such a situation, yet other countries haven't received such kind of Yeah, reaction. that one yeah. comes, I think there are many aspects of that mm. that we should again appreciate as a country. Mm. One, ESGs mm. are being promoted or they have become forefront, mm. I think in the last year or two. Mm. So we are more or less the first poster child of a country that has passed a law in a period when these particular aspects of ESGs are at the forefront of decision making in the West. So we make ourselves targets at a time, at a confluence of factors that we may not have realized as a country, that we are kind of landing in a storm that has been brewing, the push and shove, and then we, we, we kind of close ourselves, to, from, or ourselves away from what the world is going through, and we design a lot anyway. Mm. And then the, the idea that because some countries are not facing, maybe put their laws in place much earlier, first of all, and or they don't necessarily get loans from the World Bank because a lot of my friends and other spaces talk of Saudi Arabia, talk of other countries that are more or less in a different league as far as loans are concerned. So they don't necessarily get any funding mm. from the World Bank in that sense. Mm. So they may not have to face any particular actions from the World Bank immediately. But even Saudi Arabia go, suffers from the from the other institutions that, that, uh, that, that focus on other areas. But the World Bank, as far as we're concerned, is central to our economy. So as a country, they feel we have a direct relationship with them. And their action actually is not punitive at the moment. It was a decision trying to warn us against going ahead with the law. And if you notice, even our president is talking of discussions. Discussions don't indicate punity from the other side. They indicate a certain level of interaction. And so these ones are telling us that at the moment, we are not going to receive any funding requests from you, mm -hmm. new yes. funding requests mm -hmm. from Uganda for, this, for the coming period unless the law is dealt with. I, th I think there we are. If we read them carefully, read their statements and appreciate what the our president is also trying to communicate. There are discussions going on. And I previously, when this very similar law was brought earlier, there was again a similar push and shove and discussions, and ultimately it made it was in the courts and it was withdrawn. So I don't know why we keep going back on areas that we know we've had confrontation, had confrontations. Of course, it could be political and other decisions may be in the underlying areas, but we should also appreciate the kind of pressure we put on ourselves <coughs> by decisions we make, almost being blind to reaction that comes. I was surprised people were shocked this had come up, and yet we had been having a back and forth push and every, before the law was passed. So as far as the law is concerned, just one area that I wanted to write. But as the major was talking, he mentioned World Bank not being a significant funder in in Uganda, and that shocks me, because... Did I say not being significant? Not I being said World Bank funding needs an economist, economist to think through. through. It, 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 it needs an economist to... Po you point, <laughs> you are an economist. And he's here to give the you perspective. You point, but an ordinary peasant will not. No, okay. That's why this, this show... You point is... This, this show, show is experts. purely for the citizens. And because it's economy. <laughs> and you because, push it out. <laughs> be, because we come with our different expertise, yeah. and the citizens should be able to benefit from this. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. I, I, I think you should be able to give the perspective in that direction. Yeah, so mm -hmm. some of the aspects that we have to appreciate about the World Bank right now is that it's a five institution, five institutions into one. The group has five institutions. The one that has done a lot of work here is IDA. IDA, basically, is a, is a segment of the World Bank 
that focuses on poorer countries. And most roads always mm. have that signpost. Idea, I think anyone idea. who drives across the country yeah. will find numerous roads, roads that have funded. been paved, for example. <laughs> hey, including the one going to my district to be yeah. sure. when I drive on, using when, funds. when I drive on most roads that we have around the country, they are basically funded by but the okay. one that goes to the president. Let me let me let me just say let me this. Mm, <coughs> let me pass I, I'm from economy. the <laughs> oh, from up country where we have seen World Bank projects. Mm. The recent USMI urban infrastructure. And in it most gets... of these the Recent. urban resilience and land yes. gets 1.1 billion dollars from World we, Bank. If you if you go to all these uh, new cities and the municipalities, you will see some new roads. Mm -hmm. Those roads have been done using World Bank funding. Yeah. The new markets, what they call uh, mm. modern markets. Mm -hmm. I think was Arab construction, Arab Bank. Maybe one in one day is World Bank. If Arab have, Bank. Yeah, those have been done using World Bank funding. We have seen the the seed schools mm -hmm. being done by World Bank World Bank funding. We've seen in the health sector a number of uh, support. I mean uh, initiatives benefiting. It is true. Some of the support that World Bank has given to this country have funded consumables. Mm -hmm. either in the health sector or in the and that should be able to reflect in the well-being socio-economic well-being of, mm -hmm. of the of the of the citizens mm -hmm. so when uh, senior here says mm -hmm. it needs an economist okay. but you can so see it out. took us a time to <laughs> push it out <laughs> yes. truly but mm -hmm. hasn't it taken three of you to look for it no 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 <laughs> I want the data here yes, so so three of you to look for it I will share one word it has taken three of you to look for it that's basically what I said you can't solve with an open eye for me for me the truth here is that World Bank has been with us for as long for as long as Mm. Uganda has been ex mm. independent mm. since independence. World Bank has been here. Yeah. These are the alternatives that have come on board: the Chinese, <coughs> the Japanese, the Arab world, and what have you, mm. have come in after us failing to meet some of the minimum standards right. of World Bank. Mm. And we are thinking it's an alternative. Yeah. But we have, you know, Dr. Sarah said there are countries where, mm. after the, the terms and conditions mm. for the, the, the funding from China and wherever mm. are different from what World Bank offers. Yeah, correct. And much as he said, you went to pick some envoy from mm. the airport and mm. the facility in which they were seated. Mm. But where built. they drove, the express highway is funded well, by let Japanese, let me, let me not me. Chinese. Yeah, mm. but the company that implemented the project is, yeah. is Chinese. Yes, mm. but the money is Japanese. Japanese yeah. We actually mm. went up to, to the headquarters of, of, of this company. Yeah. CCCC, mm. which did the renovation of the airport and Correct. this road. Mm. Now, the conditions under which these facilities have been approved are that China, actually, it's the collateral mm. is a national asset. Yeah, yeah. sovereign property. Mm. You see Sinuk in, <laughs> in, 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 in the oil valleys. Mm. Whatever they're doing there, the, the, the conditions for their investment mm. is that they are going to be co-owners mm. of the asset of the of the resources yeah. that are going to be extracted from the Albertine region mm. so these need to be looked at objectively mm. uh, I to actually, to China, uh, actually oh, world yeah. bank has you been looking at yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. building our mm. capacity mm. for sovereignty Correct. But we have failed because of corruption. And now we are mortgaging poor governance and sovereign corruption. property. It's mm. China. So, Sarah, I, I know Ronald has not finished his yeah. submission. Okay. Uh, he could finish his yes, submission and we'll go for a break and no then he'll we'll give us information. No yeah. So, mm. basically, what I was trying to point out is that first of all, we have IDA mm. that funds, especially government, on areas that many of us have listed. It's what we've seen around our cities that is coming up and new roads and things of that nature has been IDA. Mm. But of that, there is also a private arm of the World Bank, the IFC. Mm. IFC has funded a lot of projects in our country. And these ones are even more immediate for us to worry. Nakasero Hospital is partly funded by IFC, private arm. It, its first loan in the country was after independence in 1965. They funded Madivan. 
in building the textile company they had was Malco. Mm. Mm. That was IFC. It's a World Bank institution. We have um, we have uh, Roofings. Roofings has been funded by IFC. It's a World Bank institution. We have. Uh, I could go on and on. I'm in, within the private mm. sector, we have a long grain mm. pulse. Mm. Many of these institutions that within the private sector that can get funding that is reasonable and can be partly backed by government has been by IFC, which is part of the World Bank. Bujagari has an IFC aspect. So in that one, everyone should know because the part of uh, when we suffered through electricity problems and and we are with load shading, a break on the rest of them. Which is now on the increase. Uh, mm. There you go. Jagari was mm. partly funded by IFC, even if it was organized and pushed forward by the Aga Khan. <coughs> so when we talk of World Bank, to me, ultimately... Maybe you need to drive this point home, mm. that IMF, uh, uh, IMF mm. made recommendations mm. of privatization. Yeah. And when they did make that recommendation to us, they accompanied it by IFC, mm -hmm. oh. that this private sector mm -hmm. can actually get, get funding. Mm -hmm. lending. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And which lending can mm -hmm. put in place mm -hmm. projects. Now, Nakasero Hospital, Roofings, Madivan, mm -hmm. and whatever, they're employing mm -hmm. Ugandans. Mm -hmm. And that is where I think we need to appreciate Correct. the World Bank mm -hmm. as an embodiment mm -hmm. that is giving support. Mm -hmm. And which has direct impact mm. on the Wanainch, the citizens of this country. Yeah. Because Nakasero Hospital has, I don't know how many staff they employ, mm. but those are Ugandans. But it's also Roofing. one of the mm. best providers. Exactly. Mm. Go to Madivan, yeah. the people who are working there, yeah. right from the, those who are in the sugarcane or whatever, yeah. mm -hmm. or in the cotton mm. gardens or farms, mm. those are Ugandans. So really, we need to appreciate it from that perspective. Thank you. Now, Thank remove you. those mm. institutions or those mm. funding from those mm. companies. Mm. You can get the picture. All right. So thank you so much. Uh, and and we'll, at this point, we'll take a break. And uh, to you, our viewers, thank you so much for accepting to be part of uh, this conversation. You can uh, be part of this conversation by commenting, by tweeting, but also uh, definitely uh, putting all the comments that you have on the comment sections. And this conversation has just started. And it should be, uh, uh, it should eventually inform the policy direction of this country. Don't we are taking a break? Uh, we'll be back shortly. The Citizens Chat Room happens every Friday at 2 p.m. on Civic Space TV online on Facebook and YouTube. We invite you to be part of this conversation. Civic Space TV, freedom always. Welcome back, our viewers, and thank you so much for staying with us. Thank you once more for being a, a part of the family of uh, Civic Space TV and for always. Uh, being part of even at the other shows focus on parliament, the, the the one on the youths and all the shows. And we can definitely ensure that the conversations we have here just become the start and we can continue the conversation and hand it over to you. You have the, the platforms, the social media platforms at your disposal. You can leave a comment. Please uh, don't forget to subscribe, but also more importantly, to meaningfully share these conversations on all the platforms. Before we went for the break, uh, Ronald was uh, was, concluding, was concluding his remarks as far as the discussion is concerned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, talking of the World Bank and its involvement in our economy, it's so wide that sometimes every time we talk, we pick up the topic, you realize there are a long list of other areas that you you don't even what you don't even focus on because. On a technical front, we should appreciate that it's the World Bank that determined what we have as authorities today. So the structuring of our bureaucracy was basically World Bank work that we adopted. If and notice, we are crying that there are too many. Now, nah, there you go. But because, that's at the tail end. Government. At mm. the tail end of but a long the, process. Mm. Because yes. with the privatization unit, was, which was basically World Bank entity. Mm. That was then localized when the World Bank finished the process of restructuring. Well, that's when we did went through privatization. That's on a technical front. You can imagine the kind of authority reach that we have had in the, in the country in the last 20 years or so. This is basically determined by the World Bank. But more than anything, if the World Bank, being one of the most involved at the ground level, coming up, has some of the de most detailed technical information about our economy that every other donor 
or funder who may want to come into the country often tries to rely on the direction the World Bank gives. That ultimately, if we <coughs> went into a real red zone and the World Bank fully suspended us or withdrew and we are in, in that total lockdown away from the World Bank, I don't think there is any serious funder who will be left because the rest would follow, they would leave. Just find out what happened with Zimbabwe. When the Bretton Woods institutions left, or were no longer engaging with Zimbabwe, ultimately there is not a single funder who remained. China did remain. And, but how did China help, help Zimbabwe? Even as it stayed. So any of us who think we have alternatives of funding outside what the World Bank basically lays as a foundation and everyone else follows, we'll be really in trouble. But more than anything, looking at some figures on our in off budget funding, project funding in the country, there was around a figure of seven six or seven trillion, and almost thirty five percent of that was World Bank funded. Almost the whole section where we went through COVID interventions, we had done NUSAF, we've done all these other areas that are that the major indicates as ones that require <laughs> economists to dig out and mine out and... I'm sure when you bring out Nusaf, Nusaf. Mm. he took a and deep breath and um, oh, he's okay. now beginning to... <laughs> did yes. you mention Nusaf? <laughs> Nusaf yes, is one well, you, you didn't mention... It's actually a grant, not even a, a you didn't And mention. it's a grant. You, don't you are mentioning it now. You didn't mention them. <laughs> yeah. mm. So ultimately, yeah, that's it's what I was saying. With the World all. Bank, eh, mm. you find that when you really start digging, you will go deep and it's some of the industrial decisions we are making and the, some of the projects we are putting in place to try to push for industrialization are partly funded by the World Bank. And so on and on and on, these interventions are really deep. They are not just the funding itself. There is the technical reports that they really generate. Then the ones that the rest of the funders out there that we may reach out that to they use. follow. Mm, yeah. mm. They will follow those technical detailings and either feel comfortable coming in. And the mm. confidence of the economy. Mm. And they, of course, ultimately, if you lose that confidence, mm. Mm. then we are really in trouble. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Roland. And thank you for your submissions, Sarah. And, and I know you would want to provide us with a bit of statistics as far as uh, the in addition, is concerned, in addition the to Eric But even as, as, as you respond to that, I, oh. I would want you to place yourself in the foot of an, a potential investor mm. uh, who, who is willing to put some money in the economy. Of Uganda? Of Uganda. Mm. Do you think the, the, the happenings in the country and some of those outside gives you confidence to put your money here? Okay, yeah, just to add on what Eric has shared and for the benefit of viewers, I want to mention some of the key projects that World Bank funds mm -hmm. in Uganda, and in addition to what Honorable has shared. Honorable did share the urban resilience and land project, which includes roads in the new cities, mm -hmm. $1.1 billion, and that's 21% of World Bank support. 16% mm -hmm. of their support goes into energy and extractives, and that is $832 million. Mm -hmm. 10% of their support goes into governance, yeah. electoral commission, and the rest of the work, mm -hmm. judiciary. That's $520 million. 9% mm -hmm. goes into water, and this is $468 million. 8% goes into finance, competitiveness, and innovation. Mm -hmm. This is $416 million. 8% goes into social sustainability and inclusion, mm. including elderly grants mm -hmm. and other things. Mm. That is uh, $416 million. 7% mm. mm. goes into transport, the, mm. the road networks, mm. $364 million. 6% mm. goes into health, nutrition, mm. and population. Mm. This is $664 million. 4% education, mm. this is $208 million. Mm. 4% agriculture and food security, $208 million. Four, another 4% digital development. Mm. We've just launched the roadmap for digital transformation, mm. $208 million. 3% goes into environment, 
natural resources and the blue economy. Mm. This is 156 million. I also want to mention that, you know, people are making it sound like this is the first country to mm. be sub suspended by World Bank. Mm. Last, in this year alone, mm. World Bank has suspended funding for Tunisia because mm. of the attacks on black immigrants, mm. uh, suspended the humanitarian project in DRC mm. because of mismanagement. Mm. This was a, about $16 million project mm. for, for DRC. Mm. And in, May, in March 2002, World Bank suspended funding for Russia and Belarus because mm. of aggression against Ukraine. Yeah. So people shouldn't be. I know we have heard of World Bank suspension for the first time, yeah. but it's not the first time mm. that World Bank suspends funding for member states mm. because of acting against their values. Mm. So it's not just something that is happening to mm. Uganda. Mm. When you ask about, would I put money in the economy in Uganda today? Yes. The way it's governed, mm. Mm. it's like throwing money in a deep pit. Mm. So if I was an investor today, mm. I look at a country mm. that has suspended the biggest grant <coughs> mm. in the economy, mm. in the DGF for non government government and non government actors, mm. DGF. Mm. DGF was paying around 500 million in taxes through their support. Mm. And this, th th this is mainly through the, the staff and hotel revenue. Yeah. Mm. Staff salaries, rent, yeah. rental tax, and hotel revenue. Mm. It is much more than that. Yeah. Because when you, a project is employing hundreds of people, mm. these people are spending. Mm. So you are spending a lot of money in the economy mm. through DGF. Mm. A country has closed that money, mm. pushed it out of the economy. Mm. Mm. A country that has pushed out the UN Human Rights Office. Mm. These days, modern business has a component of business and rights, yeah. which the Ugandan government actors mm. might not understand. Mm. And, and, and many people have been on air saying, why should a bank, a bank is business, is a money lender. Why should it be based about rights as mm. if they are robots? Mm. People who work in the World Bank are human beings. Mm. And they have integrated mm. business rights and human rights approach mm. to development, mm. which Uganda doesn't have. Mm. And Uganda wants to push people mm. to, to operate in their draconian manner mm. of abuse of human rights characterized by torture and kidnaps, yeah. thinking the world should move their way. The world has shifted. Mm. So when you look at a, a country, mm. indeed, that you could nap and touch your own citizens. Mm. Would I put money in mm. such a country? Mm. If you look at the corruption index, mm. if you see what has happened in the oil industry alone, mm. that we are dragged to international courts for corruption and bribery, mm. and the name of the president is mentioned, mm. heritage case, mm. you have on a court record, heritage saying, mm. we were told the president had short term needs mm. for money for campaigns. Mm. <laughs> On a, on a, in the UK, you know, people read. Mm. We are now in French courts mm. over environmental degradation. Mm. We've lost about 60% of our forest cover, mm. meaning we don't care about the future. Mm. Would I put money in Uganda today? Mm. Where you have the, your own inspector general of government saying you steal to a fifth of your budget mm. every year mm. is stolen. Mm. 10 trillion is mm. stolen. Mm. This half of this is donor money, mm. loans and grants mm. is stolen by your workers. Mm. The president has been on record mm. going into foreign countries and telling people that my, my people are thieves. Mm. He said it mm. in Rwanda, mm. he said in Kenya, mm. that you say I cannot chase people from wetlands because I want to vote mm. on international <coughs> platform. Mm. So for me, the, 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 the fiscal environment is too much inf infected that mm. if I were, and I'm happy about the World Bank mm. suspension, mm. and I wish other people can put a hold, can we first check? Mm. Why is it? Mm. So look at the, where does money go? Mm. We are now borrowing to pay salaries. Mm. Why? Mm. When we collect 27, now projected 29 trillion in the new budget, mm. Why do we borrow to pay salaries? Mm. Why? Mm. Look at the bloated mm. political administration mm. of this country. Mm. 
82 cabinet ministers, mm -hmm. 96 presidential advisors, who have all been public that they never made me to the president. Mm -hmm. So you don't know why they are advising him or no, mm -hmm. just select people to give pocket money. Yeah. You look at parliament, 429 MPs. Mm -hmm. We are creating districts every day. I mm -hmm. hear there's a plan to create 15 new municipalities. Mm -hmm. For what? Mm -hmm. For what mm -hmm. reason? Mm -hmm. Even the approach that we administer ourselves alone. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think really we need to first close our, our borrowing doors mm -hmm. and clean the house. Mm -hmm. And maybe start afresh. We need to reboot mm -hmm. this system. Thank you, thank you, Sarah. And uh, uh, Honorable Atiku, yeah. listening to Sarah, do you think <coughs> there is really hope for us? If you look at uh, the, the, the previous budget, we had projected to collect 25 trillion locally. We were able to raise up to 21 trillion, of which this year we, we pushed it to 29. Also, we are not very sure of really getting there. There are definitely other sources of, of, of funding to, or other sources of money to support that. In the event that government insists on this position and says we are not going, we are not taking the decision back. How do we move? What, what, where can we get the remaining resources? I would like to use the the president's uh, word, the word frugal. Mm. It came out from him mm. as one of the the measures he mm. thinks his government should apply mm. that all government staff mm. or public servants mm. should become frugal mm. in terms of uh, usage of any resources mm. at their disposal yes now you have asked this question after giving us uh, information of what we collect as a country. Mm -hmm. Last year, we collected, is it 20? Around 21. 21 trillion? Yes. Mm -hmm. mm, there was a shortfall. There was a shortfall. Mm -hmm. yeah. And with the current economic situation, mm -hmm. you would indeed say it will drop further. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, when you juxtapose that against the debt servicing portfolio, mm -hmm. which is around 29 trillion or and, mm. and our national resources <laughs> that we've exactly. depleted mm. by half. Yeah. Twenty about twenty-nine trillion mm. goes to debt servicing. Mm. That means even for us to be able to service our debt, mm. whatever we're collecting domestically mm. cannot mm. service mm. the debt. Yeah. So it means either we have shortfalls which are accruing as arrears. Mm which of course also have implications mm. especially in terms of interest mm. <laughs> penalties mm. 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 or we are borrowing mm. to service mm. debt mm. actually that's the truth it, mm. it has happened we have borrowed mm. to service debt mm. Mm. or we have applied mm. to restructure mm. debt repayment mm. which can happen and with of China. course it has happened with world bank mm. facilities mm. Mm. <laughs> but with the other Loan sharks. Mm. You can't. You can't do mm. that. Yeah. Now that is the position where we are. Mm. So ask yourself if we have been implementing some infrastructural developments. Mm. Where has the money been coming from? Mm. If it's not from World Bank, mm. which had remained as the only source mm. that has been cushioning us mm. amidst this harsh economic situation. Mm. Leave alone some of the grants that World Bank has been giving mm. from the time of COVID. Mm. Now that they have now suspended mm. this cushioning facility, mm. we are now bare in an empty room. Mm. I've told you mm. in the last final, before I left parliament, mm. the last three financial years, mm. we had been approving loans which government called budget support. Mm. But this budget support, we came to realize it was meant to pay salaries. Mm. Now, an economy that is relying on loans to pay, to pay salaries, mm. automatically, mm. there's a problem. Mm. Now, all these situations that have built to this state or uh, current state mm. 
has been because of poor governance. And mm -hmm. the biggest element in the poor governance mm. is corruption. Mm. With impunity. People have been stealing with impunity. Mm. The president has not put his feet on the ground mm. to punish mm. people who have been caught dipping their hands in national coffers. Yeah. And he has openly said this in the public forum. But no, don't uh, you go don't slow scale. on li lifestyle audit. Mm. Mm. You are telling an arm of government which mm. is there by establishment of law mm. to curb corruption and also to apprehend corrupt individuals who has come up with an initiative that would actually get rid of mm. thieves in the government. Mm. And you are telling the person, no, 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 go slow here. Because these people, whatever they steal, they're investing it here. Mm. They may otherwise end up getting, I mean, start investing abroad. Mm. You are admitting that actually you have failed mm. in tackling corruption. Mm. Now, that to me speaks volumes. Mm. 10 trillion shillings. That goes, you know, into <coughs> hands of the thieves. Is money we borrow. Now, this is money which also which, which accrues interest. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking of 10 trillion, actually, it's not in its actual sense, not only 10 trillion. It is more than 10, 10 trillion. We're talking of close to 20 trillion because when you put the aspect of, of the interest. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I have a feeling that uh, this suspension, however long it will last, mm -hmm should be able to take us back to the drawing board, yeah. particularly the NRM government, mm. to begin to look at the measures they have been taking mm. to address corruption, to address issues of mm. duplicity mm. of, of, of <coughs> government agencies. Yeah. You can't have a ministry and you have Amazing. an agency. Mm. What is the work of the uh, Ministry of Works? Mm. Why should you have UNRWA? When you have Minister of Works, why should you have, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, 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 the, the Forest Authority? Mm -hmm. When you have Minister of Water and Environment. Mm -hmm. Now, th these to me mm -hmm. are areas where we have been, you know, wasting a lot of resources, wastage of resources, public mm -hmm. resources. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy that uh, there are some steps being taken mm -hmm. to have uh, these institutions merged back under ministry or the various ministries so that uh, we, we, we can be left with a few authorities that are actually revenue generating. When I'm talking of revenue generating authorities, I'm talking of Uganda Revenue Authority, mm. that is revenue generating. When we're talking of civil yeah, aviation authority, yeah. that is revenue generating. Mm. When we're talking of, uh, of, of uh, uh, UIA, Mm. Uganda Investment Authority, mm -hmm. that one is also mm -hmm. gen revenue generating and employment. Or wildlife. Or Uganda Wildlife Authority, yes. Mm -hmm. is also we, we need like 10, so, a maximum of 10, mm -hmm. from 109. Exactly. So there's like need for 10. us now to begin looking Key at agencies. the frugality yeah. that the president is talking about. is about mm -hmm. now having a lean government, mm -hmm. but also allowing broadening. You know, this is... Uh, 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 broad, I mean, uh, widespread agencies of government mm. have suffocated in one way or the other mm. the private sector from th flourishing. Yeah. Because w when you shrink public service, mm. you open up the economy to the private sector. And that's where the exchange of money and employment is created. Mm. That's where Uganda Revenue Authority will be able to collect mm. taxes. The, you, you widen the tax base. Yes. So, Mm -hmm. That, to me, is the, the, the manner in which we have to tackle this situation. Otherwise, it is a timely uh, situation mm -hmm. because I think it is in the hardest situation that we think best. Mm -hmm. The reason why we are talking about the West having the economies because they have taken stringent measures. Yeah, out of world. Mm -hmm. Exactly, because the little that they have, mm -hmm. they manage it with efficiency and efficacy. Yeah. So that, to me, should, as, as a country, we should be able to use this situation mm. to look at the areas where we have been wasteful, mm. to look at the areas where we have been stealing mm. with impunity, mm. 
whether being into family members or brothers or whatever, mm. go to some of these places. Mm. People employing relatives. Yes. A father sitting with a granddaughter mm. in the same ministry mm. or in the same agency, actually the agencies especially. Mm. That's where people have employed mediocrity. Mm. People who don't deserve to be in those offices. Yeah. Because somebody has the mandate mm. to recruit or, you know. So, for me, it is a, a moment of reality where we must strip naked, mm. look into the mirror, and see where the hair has overgrown, mm. and trim it so that we can look smarter. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. And that's a very... <laughs> the analogy is timely. Afanda which listening to... Uh, in your submission, you're looking for a very good economist to point out uh, the questions of the World Bank <coughs> and its impact. The panel here has been gracious enough. I don't know if, if, if they have to you to point out some of these uh, very, very key projects as far as their contributions are concerned. Could it be that you are undermining or you are, under, you are unders underscoring the situation or its politics that we are playing? Yeah, I think your question it's similar to the first one you asked me. And my answer was that we take it seriously. It's a great concern. So you are put back barely the same question. Oh. So there is no underplaying. There is no letting it go. Mm. And that's why I even said, the president said, mm. we have to discuss to negotiate with them. Mm. So they have raised valid issues mm. in their opinion. Mm. And we, we have to answer them. Mm. So that is, uh, we can't underestimate that. Mm -hmm. But of course, you, you, you realize that uh, uh, when I posed that question, mm -hmm. it took three of my colleagues to think. In fact, Sarah went to Google. No, no, no. Google to look <laughs> no, no, at it. No, 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 I want her to be accurate. You see statistics are not to be not that easy. Yeah, but I, I want her to easy. be accurate. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, but, but also oh, the standard being, mm -hmm. The availability These are of information. Yeah, so, mm. no, but, you, you but also, just, uh, mm. Major, mm. we need to put this part. <laughs> the projects that you <laughs> mentioned of, of, of China mm. are of recent. Yes, yes. This is Twin Towers we are talking about has not lasted uh, more than 10 years. Are the Twin Towers a proper government? Are they a proper government? They are. They are a donation to, mm. <laughs> to the mm. Ghana government. Mm. Mm. The road that you are talking about is not more than 10 years. Mm. They renovated the airport. Who has properties of is, So I will also learn to intervene in your submission. <laughs> I was timing Honorable. Honorable gave an interrupted submission for 12 minutes. No, it's because... I, 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 I was taking notes. Not that when he talks, I have nothing to intervene. But I just thought I would let him flow. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. I was checking my thing, it's 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. If I had nothing to intervene, <laughs> then I had nothing to write. <laughs> what I would have intervened is what I was Rose. writing. Okay. Otherwise, I would intervene with his flaw. Mm, it's okay. It's so, okay. Mm. Uh, uh, my colleague there says that uh, there are requirements. Mm. But we also noticed it's a membership fund. Mm. How I wish, it, if it was bilateral, mm. if it was bilateral, mm. You see, in a bilateral arrangement between USA and Uganda, mm -hmm. in a bilateral arrangement between Netherlands and Uganda, mm -hmm. you can say your conditions. Mm -hmm. So I'm still repeating that even in Security Council, we should really develop a consensus way of looking at things, especially if it is a common good for all. Mm -hmm. This is a cry not only to World Bank, but even Security Council. Mm -hmm. We have cried and cried about mm -hmm. the, 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 the reorganization. Mm -hmm. But if it is a bilateral ar arrangement between mm. Netherlands and Uganda, you can say whatever you, because it is your offer and acceptance. Mm. So I still feel I have an issue there. Uh, now, my colleague again insists that when you pass a law against a group, that is a discrimination. Mm. In this act, I repeat that we went, we as a party, went for a movement caucus. I am a director in the party, mm. and therefore I sit in the movement caucus of parliament. Mm. Why? Because the movement caucus of parliament is an organ of the party under the party constitution. Mm. Just like you have youth, the youth league, mm. women league, and all. So directors are sit Good. in that league. Mm. So I sat in the movement caucus. We mm. agreed to delete discrimination, and that's why mm. I still want to look at the act again. Mm. So, but when you said you pass a law on discrimination against a group. 
I am not so sure if you pass a law against a group of thieves, mm. you would have violated any law. Mm. This now brings us to the, to the community understanding of whether this is a group as said by some people mm. or not. Mm. But somebody now comes with a unilateral decision and mm. says, yes, it is a group. Mm. And he says, keep quiet, shut up, this mm. is a group. Mm. Some of us believe <clears throat> they are not a group. Mm. So if it is by law mm. that when you pass a law against a group, mm. even a group of thieves, then you are offending. Mm. I don't know. But how you decide it is a group and a unilateral decision, mm. and I say it is not a group, mm. but you rule no, keep quiet, it is a group, mm. then there is also an issue there. Now, uh, they are already, I started by saying we have criminal law provisions mm. over this. Mm. And some of us wondered whether our land friends really read criminal law provisions. Mm. Otherwise, passing some of this unnecessary law amounts to provocation. You are creating a fire that you can't sort, put it out. Mm. And yet you have actually provisions in place. Mm. But they ignored our views and they went ahead. And I was even surprised that a view that was so much supported by government was mm. passed by, was moved by a, a, a private member and opposition. I don't know whether it tricked us and we were sleeping. <laughs> so is, is, I don't know whether it, it tricked us we were sleeping. Or so. is, is it your view that uh, the anti-homosexuality law as it is was not needed for? I have said before that we did not warrant the passing of that law, in my opinion. Mm. And my opinion as a lawyer, mm. not my opinion as a party, mm. but my opinion mm. as a lawyer mm. is that we did warrant. The Why law. is a law? Mm. A law is to address a mischief. Mm. Was there a gap in addressing any mischief? Mm. You can't come and pass a law to address a mischief if there's already a law to addressing mm -hmm. that mischief. So mm. I, I did not see any need for that. Now, mm. again, maybe this is for academic reasons. My friend says that we're joining Amer American war on cultures. Mm. I am not so sure that. Mm. If we were joining an American war, mm. you'd pick an opinion from an ordinary villager who mm. doesn't even read social media, mm. and you see whether he agrees with this or not, or his feeling. Mm. If an illiterate person in a village who does not even have access to America or any social media mm. shares the views, mm. then I think you're talking of the feelings of an ordinary person. Is that the litmus yeah. test? I yes, thought, because mm. we, we mm. a parliament is a national assembly. Not 45 million people can assemble in Kololo. Mm. So when they elect him, they elect him to come to that assembly. Mm. So he is representing the feeling and the wishes of the people. Mm. So what else is better than that? Major, so, should I help you on that? I, I just have help a little, me? Just a little. Mm. Just a little. You what you say? Mm. No, I'm agreeing with you to a certain mm -hmm. extent. Mm. When you go to a villager and inquire about this particular law and mention things concerning homosexuality, of course they will be fully agreed and you they will be horrified but if you sat back or even question them whether there is participation of the population within the area or whether in these that acts, or whether this is their problem is mm. it a problem where mm. they are located mm. <laughs> or in all our villages mm. if we really really went deep in our villages and inquired mm. Mm. what are the, <clears throat> what's the the spread or the the experience you have with homosexuality within the in your villages, mm. it's either non-existent or minimal or even unheard of. That if you mentioned it as something that is coming and it's in Kampala and it's coming down to your village anytime soon, please, we better do something. Of course, they'll be frightened and mm. afraid. But if they are really facing mm. a particular fear within their own location, mm. it's rare to find that this is active in mm. our villages. Mm. It goes back to the theory of a law addressing a mm. mischief. Do yeah. they consider it a mischief or not? No. So, uh, uh, mm. I, I, I just like to comment about, uh, the, 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 especially the private investment arm of, uh, mm. of uh, IFC. 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 Yes, IFC. I'm glad it came up after thorough thinking. Mm -hmm. But I, I was just <laughs> laughing at myself that, uh, you know, when we were in Makere doing law, it came to a time when some students started fixing fictitious law 
mm. until Professor Kakwa said, hey, just a minute, you photocopy and bring it. Otherwise, we had started fixing the case of Willington versus Mark the Arthur or something. So I was worried that you people could be fixing that, but I give you the benefit of the doubt. But I was worried that you could be fixing, taking up list of all the things that you don't know. So other, but I give you the benefit of the, the doubt. But otherwise, we had reached a point of fixing. Faking up cases until Professor Kakoze said, I've been a professor <laughs> for long. Which case are you like? <laughs> so I hope you guys are not picking things which don't even uh, exist. This is on record. Oh, no. very fine, uh, yeah, I, I like second last comment is that I like to agree that human rights should be considered in all our endeavors of development. Mm. I have repeated here and again that me, even in the party, I don't only do politics per se, but I look at politics from a rights-based approach. Mm. Mm. So it is not true to say that you can develop without respecting human rights. That's completely out of mm. the way. I happen to have been at the highest apex of human rights of human of UN for eight years, elected mm. by General Assembly in New mm. York, mm. 193 countries. I have won the election for two Kisanja, well, four well. years each. Mm. And I actually was charged with the mandate of the Convention on the Rights of the Child. Yeah. Mm. I was one of the nine persons in the entire world for eight years. Mm. So I cannot be the same person to turn around and play rights. Mm. You can't develop without rights. So mm. there's no doubt. And movement mm. as a party and a government respects human rights. The point here but, yeah. is but, we seem not to agree over before there, we come up with the other sorts of rights. You know, I, I, it mean, respects I, I, rights I, of I, their I, supporters. I, 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 yeah, and, and probably I think that's also a very pertinent <laughs> question. Mm. When we talk about the rights, the question of human rights in the country has been a very uh, pertinent one. Mm. We've seen uh, a lot of abuses, including the, the issues that Sarah raises, the closure of some of these institutions that promote but also watch. If we, uh, maybe I've, I've seen also other commentators mentioning that would, why would World Bank await for us to pass such a law? We have had other serious issues as far as human rights are concerned. Maybe it has been an accumulation. Sorry to come in, moderator, mm, mm, to disrupt mm, your question, mm, but uh, it would be good for a pundit to answer at once. Mm. Yeah, in terms of a, a, a human rights based approach for development, I would really consider Uganda as a patient with many underlying mm, conditions. Mm. So I think World Bank is like a patient who has many underlying conditions mm. and then they get through and die. Mm. <laughs> I think that's the real situation mm. that we are mm. dealing mm. with. Back mm. to you, Madrid. Yeah, so <laughs> in light, in light, I, I just need to give that perspective in light of this. No, I want to deal with Sarah's and <laughs> You see, I saw a joke on a social media mm -hmm. where there are many rights issues. Mm -hmm. And the almighty World Bank, torture, World Bank said, wait. Wait. Uh, uh, what else? Oh, Kidnaps. Pending. <laughs> so, it is not true that, so it is not true that yours is, a, in other words, they don't consider that. <laughs> no, no, no. It so was all the these rights you were saying, the World Bank was saying pending. It was the money. last stroke. It was an accumulation. No, it, no today they are saying pending. Mm. <laughs> they are saying this is not important. It is this one that is important. No, no. And yet it is the one which we have not agreed on. Mm. So, on the question of rights, it yeah. is important. We can't do away with it. Mm. I have lived in Geneva, Switzerland for eight years yes. as a world judge of human rights. Mm. It is not me to say mm. that human rights is not a priority. Mm. So, I, I, I do that. Now, uh, lastly, Sarah, you posed the question to Sarah about, uh, about uh, whether or not mm. to invest. Tie it with human rights. <clears throat> you don't get a country which is smooth and ideal. Mm -hmm. Not even in Switzerland that I lived for years. Mm -hmm. And how did I get to know it? Under this under our system, because we had a mandate to oversee compliance by states mm. to convention, how would they oversee Norway, for example? Mm. I'm a Ugandan. One of the procedures is we bring what we call civil society. Mm. Civil society presents what is called a shadow report. Yes. Now, this civil society live in Norway. Mm. If you see what they talk about right there, mm. you say, my God, I thought this was heaven. Mm. We even came to a position to say, if Norway comes, 
they should jump a higher bar mm. because you have everything. Mm. If Uganda comes because you know you have challenges of finance and you will lower the bar. Mm. So there is no country in the world without human rights challenges. Mm. I have had the opportunity mm. to have reports from all the 193 countries, mm. including United States appeared before me twice. Mm. So all human rights are there. Mm. In America, it's even so crude and so open. Mm. As a family, that is not a defense as Uganda to say we should violate. We try as much as possible. We have even come up with laws to say, you policeman, mm. should you go to arrest somebody and break his testicle, mm. you are personally liable. You are not longer going to raise the defense of, Attorney General sent me, I was doing work, so let Attorney General answer. Mm. You will personally be liable mm. for breaking a testicle in your arrest. Mm. So human rights is an issue that mm. we really you should do it. Mm. However, tying it with Sarah's calling of no investment, mm. it is unfortunate. Sarah. As a human rights defender. Sarah, this is uh, the I country we are all in. We are all in this saucepan. Mm. Mm. We are all in this saucepan. Mm. If you call mm. for a measure mm. to <clears throat> to penalize the country in that way. You will also feel it. You have your children, you have grandmothers, you have mothers, you have aunties. So I do think that instead of talking to the world mm. in this camera and discouraging them from investing, mm. we we'll rather said yes, please come and invest. However, <laughs> you are rich with your human rights. Mm. Can we sort it? Because this is not a perfect country. I have seen through civil society shadow report that come to me in Geneva. No country is perfect including Sweden. Inclu they can oh, actually oh, raise mm, things mm. and you get shocked. Oh, oh, I have heard them. Oh, oh. I have been privy to the entire world. Mm. So, would they call the, the country to, to now kill mm. their country? We have been huh? talking. And how, how open this matters? And, 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 and maybe mm. information. It's so progressive better. that even if you solve <laughs> one today, mm. the solution to the one creates a problem to the next. Mm. It is part of development. Mm. Even case. if you solve one, mm. that very solution will generate another problem. Mm. So we keep on solving on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. Mm. Mr. Yes, Moderator, mm. I want to pose a question for mm. Afanda, which mm. before he leaves mm. the floor. You were on the Committee of uh, Human Rights, the Global Committee, committee of Experts. Yes. <laughs> of the, the Universal Periodic Review mm -hmm. is uh, designed in such a manner that it's a peer-to-peer -peer mechanism to help countries improve. And I want to use your example of Uganda and Norway, like you've put it. So if Norway shadow reports indicate so many abuses, did they act on them or not? Because Uganda was under the second review, yeah. and Uganda was in, in Geneva in December mm -hmm. to answer whether they had rectified mm -hmm. the issues mm -hmm. it, it mentioned in the first review and adopted by state parties. Mm -hmm. And it was found that instead, <clears throat> The situation wasn't. Mm. So would you say the same of Nor? First of all, it's not a peer review. I would like to okay. correct it. Okay. You it's not a that, peer remove review. Remove the word peer. Mm. A peer review happens in a situation where your equals are assessing you. Mm. That can happen in the Human Rights Council. Mm. Because in Human Rights Council, they pick countries mm. who are actually going to assess you. Mm. So because the independent countries are assessing you, mm. it is called peer. Yeah. Even in under AU, there's a peer review mechanism where states assess you as fellow states. But in our case, you are... it's a group of independent experts. That's why I use the word judge. Yeah. That's why I use the word judge. Mm. It is a group of independent experts who don't represent countries. Once I'm elected, I mm. cease to represent Uganda's interest. Yes. I'm there in my individual capacity. Once ago, much as Uganda support my campaign and all that. So the expert opinion that you are saying is that no, no, I'm talking of the of the periodic review. I'm not necessarily talking of your committee, but I'm asking. But you started with. I'm asking committee. for your opinion. No, I'm talking so of you the mix the two. No, I'm talking of the universal periodic committee. I'm saying using your example of Nore. Mm. and Uganda, but I'm talking of universal... Okay, now let's answer review. universal periodic review, yes. which is a review by states. <laughs> mm. yes. But you started with my... No, I, 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 so, from a, your a experience. universal periodic review, <laughs> as I said, mm. is a review by equals, yeah. by states. Yeah. Now, what happens, first of all, a universal periodic review, the document that is presented to Human Rights Council mm. is a compilation mm. 
mm. of treaty bodies, mm. human rights committee, mm. economic and cultural, social and political thing, social and political is human rights. Mm. You have committee on disability, mm. women. That is a, a, a convention on elimination of women. You have the children. Mm. You have migrant workers. Mm. All this compilation of specific experts, what we call uh, concluding observations, mm. are compiled and given to uh, to Human Rights Council. Mm. Now, the states review. Mm. If no way is told to do this, do this, do this, mm. they do <clears> it. <throat> In the next review, they see what they have done. But I can assure you, no single state has come back to say what you recommended us we do it. It always comes back as a question that there's a paragraph dedicated always. Mm -hmm. We told you to do this, you didn't do. We told you to do this. That paragraph is almost a, 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 a generic paragraph. Mm -hmm. So no country has met it in all. Mm -hmm. And as I said earlier, every solution, even mm -hmm. if you do it, it creates another problem. Mm -hmm. You are told, for example, in Sweden, mm -hmm. you are told to handle migrant workers. Mm -hmm. You, there's a violations on the rights of migrant workers. Mm -hmm. No refugees. Mm -hmm. You are told Sweden is recommended to address the rights of refugees. Mm -hmm. They can address by way of relocating or mm -hmm. they are in civil society will come with further violations in that very step they took mm -hmm. in the matter of refugees' rights. Mm -hmm. So I like to say that rights are recurring as part of development. Mm. In fact, they even become sophisticated mm. as you sophisticate in mm. development. Mm. And that's why for us in, in Geneva, we even said you, you put the bar higher. Mm. So for the case of Norway, don't say that Norway was reviewed, told to do this, and they did 100%. No way. There's mm. that generic paragraph. That will come again. Mm. You are told to address the issues of refugee rights. You try to address it. You generate another problem. All right, thank you, thank you. Now, uh, finally, I like to insist that I am saying World Bank is doing a lot. Mm. I am saying we are going to engage. Engagement is on on ongoing process. Mm. I don't want a misconception like I have rubbish everything they are doing. No, mm. they're doing a good job, and that's why the president, in his own handwriting, mm. not even typed, mm. said we are going mm. to engage. Which is good, but I think somehow the conversations coming out and things we hear is of sort of bravado and chest mm -hmm. Yet the people that get affected are the ordinary citizens. And, and I want us to uh, give a way forward, really, in light of this own conversation. Where do we go? How do we move from here? We're starting with you, mm. <clears throat> Again, given what we've all discussed and we've brought to the fore, I think we all agree <clears throat> the importance of the World Bank in our economy is quite overwhelming and we should accept that. One of the reasons this has been the case is that we are one of the poorest countries. We are ranked by the ratings agency, credit rating agencies as non-investable credit. So they cannot we cannot go to international markets to get credit for development or for any major projects. That being the case, we are left with or rely on the World Bank and multilateral institutions. We fall back on them for the one reason that where there is a lot more resources, in fact, trillions of dollars to do a lot of things, we, we cannot qualify. We do not qualify. So as, an, as a country and as an economy, I think what is vital is what we need to do in order to move up the ranks to qualify. Because even at the moment, we have not yet qualified, I want, it's not the word qualification, grown out of IDA de, donations and IDA aid for that matter. We, we don't rely so much on IDRD as we do on IDA. IDA is for poor countries. If we qualify, we, will get, we may get to a point where we may no longer need IDA as a funder. And we may go to the rest of the World Bank institutions as the major funders. And when we get to, I think that's, that was partly the reason we are so fixated in getting middle income state. Because <coughs> if you are an income per capita of $1,145, income per capita, you may not qualify for IDA. 
you may jump out of that. And we may go for bigger projects and be able to do bigger things because it would indicate we are now more able to do more things. <clears throat> and one of the areas where this is very, very important, and I think it's one of our biggest structural problems, is that we are unable to generate enough taxes to meet some of the needs that we require. Because when credit ratings come into look at our economy and look at our budgets, they look at what we generate from taxes, and they see that we are unable to utilize our taxes in to pay back at a rate that is reasonable. So we can't go for bigger loans for that matter, and the more expensive ones, even, even then. And so how we restructure ourselves, because what we are trying to do with URA at the moment is push them to be as efficient as possible, to be effective with a little. The few, that, the few areas that URA is focused on are being squeezed to the bone to do as much as they can. And I think URA has also run out of room on what extra they can extract from the few areas they are focused on. Triple taxation. <laughs> Mm. And I think that is one of the biggest problems because when <coughs> these institutions look at the ways we are squeezing what we have to generate the little we do, we do get, they realize we are in the huge squeeze and we're in trouble. I think we have to find our way out of that particular cul-de-sac because we are really headed to a major problem. We, because the more efficient we think you are is becoming, the more we squeeze the few areas the private that, sector. yes, mm. private sector, and the more difficult it will be for us, for them to survive and then generate more resources for our revenue in that sense. So we have to find a way. We always talk of widening the tax base, but at an elementary level and at a, at a functional level, what's important then is to generate employment you cannot expand the tax base unless you generate employment. It's as simple as that. Most countries that have a higher, because within the region, or South Africa and the rest are in 30%, I think Egypt is, goes even higher, it could be up to 50% of its GDP coming, uh, tax, tax revenue being 50% of GDP. We are around 12, 13, we are, I think about 14. We need to double that. If we are to be able to double that, in order to be competitive and effective, we need to generate employment. And the, the one area where we have excess population and that needs to be employed in order to generate tax revenues, it's a employment tax paye for that matter. I think paye is the most significant element of taxes for economies that have higher tax bases. And so without employment, for more employment, we, are, we will be forever chasing ourselves. So the more informal the economy we have, the less the tax base. The idea then, for whatever reasons or whatever way we have to approach restructuring, we have to be formalizing. I think that is vital in our thinking. If we are going to qualify out of this particular squeeze, we have to formalize employment, we have more of our entities locally being able to have workers that we know are formally registered. And one of the ways we, we you really, really focus and appreciate formalization is if we are doing NSSF and if you're doing pay as you earn. Those two particular aspects growing would indicate a process of expanding the tax base. Whatever the government does, this only comes through incentives. It can never, ever come through punitive measures or... Incentives as in giving... Giving the private sector incentives that would allow them employ register workers, be able to focus on registering them as NSSF, register them as, as, as a <clears throat> paying taxes and meeting those even if they were in areas or whatever the case may be, but being confident enough to go through those processes and being registered in those areas, it has to be incentivized. Otherwise, we will always generate more. And with the more punitive direction we take in the tax revenue area, 
the more we form, informalize the private sector. So whichever way the government looks at things and the way we, whichever way they structure, we have to find a way of encouraging employers by incentivizing them to register, to be able to be NSSF, to capitalize, mm. cap mm. and that comes through mm. capitalization. Mm. We have had the problem, and the reason we go to the World Bank, and the reason it's so vital to our economy and holds us, mm. we, and generates this kind of sensitivity from the rest of the population, the jingoism you read and you find across the board is based on the fact that, well, okay, we're a sovereign country. Why should an entity come and force us in a direction we don't feel like, whether we are right or wrong about the anti-homosexuality bill, well, it's our decision. That maybe that's our, what we believe at the moment. We should be allowed to make the decision without an entity, a foreign entity, having to impose itself on us. And the reason we're in that position is because of some of the structural problems. And in, so whichever way we structure ourselves and bring ourselves out of this particular area is generating local capital. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Ronald, for your very insightful submission. Uh, Sarah, mm, yeah, where I do know. you move? It's, mm. it's difficult to adapt uh, <laughs> such an elaborate submission exactly, yes. by, mm. by the experts. Mm. But uh, the answer lies within increasing productivity. Mm. And uh, how do we increase productivity? <coughs> Not that I want to differ, but I want to use my governance language. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the nuance. <laughs> Uh, yes, um, so uh, governance language, really increasing productivity for the case of Uganda mm -hmm. and, and generally Africa means basically three things. One is population. Mm -hmm. How do we deploy mm -hmm. our productive population mm -hmm. as a country? Yeah. Because for any country, the biggest resource any country has it, is its people. Mm -hmm. So that this means fighting poverty. Mm -hmm fighting inequality because we have increasing inequality that has narrowed the tax base mm -hmm. we have fewer people to tax mm -hmm. i think you are deals with about <coughs> two million mm -hmm. formal or less mm -hmm. so you can imagine a population of 42 million mm -hmm. and you have the generation revenue generation agency mm -hmm. engaging with two million or less mm -hmm. that means that we have so many people mm -hmm. we have 18 a projection of 18 registered mm. voters mm. now may be more. Mm. So this means that we should have 18 million mm. taxpayers mm. and not just two mm. if we were productive. We need to fight for, to, to improve fiscal discipline yeah. as, as a country mm. and the act smartly. When you look at a, a, a you know, a gov a, our government is a government of two con major contradictions. The talk sounds transformative. They, 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 we give transformative speeches and act like people who have never gone to school. So that contradiction mm -hmm. between speech and action by President Museven. Mm -hmm. When President Museven is on a platform, mm -hmm. I have been in for a person, you have the best president in the world. Mm -hmm. The speech. Mm -hmm. If you are to award him Max based on speech, you would really be misread completely. So he acts opposite. <laughs> he acts opposite. And for leadership, and this is specifically for viewers. The, you know, the African saying is always watch the mouth yes. of, a, of a person. It means don't focus on the sweet words. Look for the action. So President Seven is a hydra inefficient mm. in terms of action. Mm. He excels in word in speech. Mm. Mm. Uh, 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 yes, I know, and politicians <laughs> say the, the English say talk is cheap. Mm. So I think President Seven needs to narrow down mm. the contradiction between his speech mm. and his actions. Mm. 
This week, his government is launching <coughs> digital transformation. Mm. In digital transformation, do you need a, a, a cabinet of, mm. of 82 million? Mm. Or you are also acting like BBC mm. before Christ came. Mm. So digital transformation mm. by that one is before Christ came, mm. the BBC. Mm. You are talking, mm. <laughs> in, if, if you are running e-government, mm. e-government means small efficiency. Yeah. Yeah. So you would have a small number of highly competent people. Yeah. I, I don't want to go into the, the sharpness of his cabinet. Mm. Because really, if you look at the representation mm. that mm. and the picture that his cabinet <laughs> portrays, it's really sharp. Mm. Both in terms of qualification, yeah. in terms of thinking and action. Mm. So and you and he cannot get it mm. right. Mm. He cannot. Mm. The, the the package he has put forward cannot increase productivity mm. for this country. Mm. I, I want to conclude that that it's so leadership. Thank you, thank you, Sarah. <laughs> a major which is looking at you in very strategic. Yeah, yeah but he understands what I'm saying. I'm sure he, will, he, will. he has <laughs> taken notes. <laughs> <in the black laughs> <book. laughs> he has taken notes. He has put them in the black book. Honorable <laughs> Atiku, uh, which way is the way forward? Yeah. You know, I think uh, for me, I, I, I'm looking at this situation in two folds. One is for self ex uh, examination. Yeah. We need to look internally. Mm -hmm. Because World Bank has just not uh, arrived today and that they are departing. Mm -hmm. They have been here mm -hmm. for as long as Uganda has been uh, independent. Mm -hmm. And we know their input mm -hmm. in terms of our uh, socioeconomic development. Mm -hmm. And therefore, their absence mm -hmm. in the near future mm -hmm. should be able to help us yeah. to analyze our economic situation. And therefore, I think I would, I would say, let World Bank first skip at that. Mm. Let them first stay out stay of our away. economy mm. so <laughs> that we can have this proper analysis. Yes, of, we put our house in order. Exactly, and, and, and address our, our situation. Because yeah. the truth is, mm. what World Bank has been doing mm. is both <coughs> soft and hardware. Yes. Mm. Soft in the area of capacity building. Mm. This, you know, the conditions World Bank has put on us has not mm. just happened today. Mm. You know the the, the restructuring mm. where some you know entities are to be you know closed, people are to be retired. Yeah. So World Bank has done certain things in this yeah. economy, mm. except that this one here has, is is a bit drastic. Yeah. And therefore, we would want to say I would, I would want to advise World Bank to mm. to, to to keep it at that. Yeah. Let us uh, assess ourselves mm -hmm. until we, we we arrive at certain decisions. Mm. for the betterment of this economy because mm. when we are to allow them back mm. then we should have put our house to order Correct. two mm. it is a fact mm. that uh, a country cannot develop without that external support yeah. and it's not only even america which is the first world mm. economy mm -hmm. is indebted mm -hmm. they borrow mm. china that is lending to us is also borrowing mm. So there's no country really that mm. uh, thrives without borrowing. Yeah. But it is important that uh, we borrow for a purpose. Yeah. We get external support for areas where that support is going to help the economy to triple whatever they have been you know, involved in. When my brother was, was, was talking about URA mm. squeezing the few entities that yeah. are taxable. Yeah. Actually, it's very embarrassing mm. that we are the we are overtaxed. The few people mm. are overtaxed. The Ugandan economy is overtaxed. Mm. Yes. And an so economy can yeah, an economy cannot develop Maybe through right. taxes. Mm. Okay, yes, it can develop through taxes, mm. but the tax base, mm. there, there, there are certain minimum standards that have to be observed. Mm. Secondly, our country or our, 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 our economy mm. has not been capitalizing mm. the private sector. We're operating a liberal economy, yes? Yeah. Yeah. But look at how much money mm. government has put into the private sector. Mm. We're just talking about UDB of recent. Mm. We're talking about uh, microfinance support center of recent. Mm. We're talking about uh, pri the private sector foundation. Mm. Now, how when you look at also the, the interest 
on those facilities that UDB is availing to the public. Mm -hmm. The interest that uh, Microfinance Support Center is availing to the public. Mm -hmm. Can they help somebody to be able to put in place an enterprise which will employ the youth mm -hmm. that can, you know, the, 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 the spending capacity, that mm -hmm. can improve the spending capacity? Because mm -hmm. they inform, I mean, the, 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 the the taxation system mm -hmm. of 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 of, of, of living, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> the, mm -hmm. the 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 taxes which are levied on our commodities. Yes. That you know, if uh, my brother, my my senior here is an alcohol consumer, mm -hmm. he'll in, in the evening after retiring mm -hmm. from work, retire at the bar, the nearest bar, and take two or three bottles of beer, mm -hmm. and in the end. Unfortunately, I'm not. Plow back <laughs> <laughs> for the avoidance of that. All right, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, but even if you drink water mm -hmm. or a glass of juice, still mm -hmm. you pay some taxes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the spending capacity, mm -hmm. we, we need to. The purchasing exactly, power. The purchasing mm -hmm. power. We mm -hmm. need to help our economy mm -hmm. by capitalizing yeah. the various enterprises, mm -hmm. by lowering the interest rates, mm -hmm. and availing enough capital mm -hmm. that I can, with my business idea, mm -hmm. I can be able to walk. Mm. to UDB yeah. and say I have a piece of land here mm. and I would like to put an eatery or a tourist center mm. and to cost this much or the, the engineer has given me BOQ of this much mm. and in the end when this project is actualized mm. can, and it can employ about 20 people mm. then URA can come in smiling Correct. for whatever taxes mm. they want yes. mm. then you, uh, URA can walk to Uganda Breweries uh, uh, company mm. smiling mm. To get MTN. Uh, exactly, MTN yeah. and whatever. So mm. I think that is the kind of discussion now we need to mm. begin engaging in. Now that we're in this situation, mm. the issue of corruption, I think mm. we have massaged so much mm. uh, uh, the corrupt people in mm. this country. Yeah. And we would like to impress it on the leadership of NRM, mm. starting with the president, mm. Mm. that you cannot all the time. Massage. Talk, 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 mm -hmm. and without having action or taking action. Mm. And we know why some of these actions have not been taken because we, mm. have, we have entrusted sensitive positions to mm. relatives. Yeah. So when we take some of these actions, sometimes it is a brother there, it's mm. a sister there, it's mm. a daughter here. So I think mm -hmm. we need to evaluate our position on the issues of governance mm. so that we can deal with the corruption because. The money that we borrow cannot be eaten by mm. corrupt mm. individual and they go scot free. Mm. So that to me is uh, the manner in which we should look at the current situation. Mm. I'm sure the debate is going to continue mm. because as time goes, mm. you'll begin seeing the biting effect yeah. of this suspension. Thank you, Honorable. Thank you, Honorable Bernard. That mm. is very for the very captivity. Thank you, Honorable. Uh, I, I see time is really time is uh, running. Time, time. Uh, but uh, uh, we mm. hope, uh, mm. uh, what happened to the ministers with Karamoja? Uh, IMC. IMC. The prosecution of one of the key offenders. There were 24 ministers. No, it not, is. To, not, to, not to really uh, rebut what has been said, okay. but to have the conversation as a way forward. Yes, but still, mm. there mm. are things that really mm. you can't do without. Mm. Mm. Uh, mm. Uh, I agree that uh, there, there's need to broaden the tax base, mm. but I think we should be careful mm. on deepening the tax. Mm. Deepening the tax, in my opinion, would be like taxing the an item and yeah. then selling from another tax. window and taxing. Mm. But, but so why we talk of broadening the tax mm. base, we mm. should be careful about deepening. Mm. Deepening would affect all of us. I was mm. talking about VAT. VAT mm. is what I'm mm. saying to so, mm. so I just want to make that comment short. Mm. Now, I, I like to comment about the expert, what I would call overemphasis on employment. Mm. You seem to say when you employ, you get a solution. Mm. I That's can only be saved by mm. a Sarah's intervention on mm. productivity. Mm. Otherwise, if it was a mere employment, we'd go mm. to the village and put everybody on the payroll, private mm. sector. Mm. Okay? Would mm. be, be, actually, for us, even mm. for a long time, we even had to go 
what to do in the army, what is called RAF, reduction in force. So, mm. no, 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 this army is too big, reduced. Mm. And even in public service, it was. Mm. So, I don't want the emphasis on employment to be misconstrued or overblown. Mm. Mm. Because if that was the case, we'd bring everybody, including mm. the relatives, on the payroll in public <laughs> service. Mm. Put them, even if they're seated in the office doing nothing. Mm. But I think I like the Sarah's position of productivity. Mm. Uh, I also like to make some clarification on taxpayers. Yeah. We seem to be saying we only two million people are paying taxes. Mm. I think that is not a very clear thing to say. Mm. We are now putting tax, what you could call taxpayers, actually mm. versus uh, tax generating, tax mm. generating or taxes, mm. because as he put the example, whoever buys paraffin. Mm even deep in the village, mm. pays taxes. Mm. So we should not only focus mm. on those who actually collect taxes and pay, mm. like MTN, and we say those are the tax only taxpayers. Tax mm. Because even someone who buys data airtime mm. deep in Karamoja mm. is paying taxes. Mm. So we could safely say all Ugandans are taxpayers. Mm. Okay? So I think that I needed to also make it clear. Finally, uh, on the rebuttal on Sarah, it says... Uh, the president speaks and acts in contrary. Opposite. Uh, mm. I, I don't think so, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, mm. President Museveni is one person mm. who speaks what he means. Mm. I can give you an example. What is the action? In 1983, in the bush, Museveni picked a stool and put it there. He said, Jadan Mokwaya, come and sit here. No, he started with Haji Kigong. Kigongo sit here. Mukwaya sit here. Ele Tumine sit here. Salim Saleh sit here. He said this bench is called National Resistance Council. Mm -hmm. It will be <coughs> parliament mm -hmm. when we take over government. Correct. Saleh simply picked his cigarette and smoked and said, is this man a mad one? Okay. When are we going to have <laughs> that? <laughs> that? This bench is going to be a parliament. Mm -hmm. True to it, in 86, he captured power. And NRC, was NRC was became the parliament. Power. It made laws and laws, mm. and it became the parliament. Mm. So he speaks what he means. Now, in the current contemporary situation, <laughs> that if you want to know that Museveni mm. speaks what he means, mm. Sarah, <clears throat> all this that we are doing crystallizes into indicators. I like to tell you that Ugandans now live longer than before. Mm. Life expectancy. Inside and it doesn't work in vacuum. So all this we are talking in policies and co interventions and all this, it would be meaningless mm. if it doesn't crystallize mm. to the fact that Museveni speaks and acts mm. and Uganda now live longer. It was mm. 45, mm. 96. <laughs> So yeah. what are you still talking about? Mm. Okay. Now, on the way forward. Well, just on that on one before, uh, just a minute, Mr. Mugenda. don't have a notebook. No, of course you are forgetting. <laughs> In the bush, is it true that the president said you were only governed for four years? Oh. <laughs> It was not that. <laughs> it was not that. But I can give you examples. The tone is I can enough. give you examples <laughs> of situations. I can give you a long list of examples of situations that he said, and, said yeah. and he acts. Mm. He doesn't forget. That mm. son of Kagota doesn't forget. Mm. He stands by. I am just giving you one example mm. in the case of NRC. Mm. I mean, I can give you many more. But now, on the way forward is that as a country, we have mm. short and long-term approach mm. to this. The long-term approach is that we should work towards an independent country economically, mm. even at household mm. level. Mm. If you have a family of six children or whatever, mm. and your neighbor is the one feeding you, mm. it will determine what you do. Mm. For example, if you decide to tell your child as a mm. disciplinary measure mm. that my child at eight, mm. please don't go out, mm. there's insecurity. Mm. And the neighbor who feed you will even tell your child, no, eight is that you go and dance. Mm. Go even at midnight. Mm. So we need an independent, mm. a, a independent mm. country economically. Mm. If we have that, mm. I think my friend alluded to that, mm. we would save ourselves. Mm. But in the meantime, in the short run, mm. we are engaging World Bank mm. on issues to do with this law in specific terms. Mm. We do believe that there are few contentious areas, mm. and that contentious areas, few as they are, should not blow our long term or a very long, a lifelong existing relation between Uganda 
and World Bank. Mm. I thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Fanda Witch, and uh, really mine is to appreciate us for for the time, Fanda Witch, for always offering time. I know you are in Entebbe, and you quickly came here to be part of the show. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Bernard. Thank you so much for 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 having been part of this conversation. It's been your maiden appearance for the show, and we've truly uh, benefited from your expertise, but also your experience and the goodness that uh, you've, you've uh, offered to us. We would want to welcome you more as and when you find time. Please be part of the conversation. We have many other shows. Uh, uh, we have Focus on Parliament. We have the Citizen Ch Chat Show. We have the other shows. So as and, as and when we call upon you, please uh, respond positively. Sarah, thank you so much for always uh, being part of the show and for your goodwill really to ensure that uh, the whole show, but also the, the vision for these conversations are given shape. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Ronald, for your expertise and for for the insights that you provided to, to the conversation. We don't take that for granted. And to you, our viewers, thank you so much for having been part of this conversation. This conversation has just started, and we hope that uh, we can continue uh, with this conversation on forward. We definitely have the government in place for which we should be able to hold them accountable and we would expect that uh, they don't take personal but also serve the execute the mandate in which they were given. Thank you so much and uh, we will definitely see you in the subsequent show. Same time, same day. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Mm -hmm.